I know you are going to crucify me. I know the tough time is going to come that you lift me up unto death and I will die. But when you've done that, when you've done your wars and you lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He and that I do nothing of myself but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Oh, may every one of us have that grace that even when the people who have the power to crucify and they have the plan to crucify, that when they are before us, what we know as the truth, the way we live for the truth, we will still live for the truth and say, eventually, maybe you pretend you don't know now, eventually you will know that I am he and I do nothing by myself, but I do everything that the Father has taught me. Verse 29, in verse 29, it says, and he that sent me is with me. The Father has not let me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, as they speak these words, the people saw the sincerity, the transparency in what he said, and they, they saw through him his personality. It was not a person, a chameleon, that you'll be here like this and there at another time when you're in Rome, do as the Romans do, and when you are, you know, in another place, Babylon, do as the Babylonians did know. He came from heaven, and he showed the life of heaven. He was impartial. He was invariable. He was inflexible. And because people saw through, and they saw that transparency, they saw that honesty, and they saw that here is no pretense at all. Many believed on him. I pray you will live a life that is believable. I said you will live a life that is believable. Uh, what a wonderful thing it will be if uh, your converted wife will see your life. That, you know, what you know in the Bible, uh, you practice it at home. And because of that, the woman says, I'm going to believe. What a wonderful thing if your husband will see the life of Christ in you. Honest, honest, and devoted, and steadfast, transparent before the Lord. And your husband will say, the life of this woman convinces me that this thing they call salvation is true. And because of that, they believe in you. What a wonderful thing if the teenagers, the teaching at school, they'll say the life of her teacher, the life of her mistress. Because of her life, we're going to believe in the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 13, we're looking at verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Any of the disciples could have said that before this was written, that yesterday, when he went about doing good, and today, as they arrest him, today, as Judas betrayed him today as they're going to hand him over to Pilate is still the same as he was yesterday so he is today and Peter took out the sword and cut off the ear of Malchus and today as Peter did that in defending him he stood down took the ear and put it back. The same yesterday, today, and forever. In the day of trial, no anger. In the day of uh, temptation, pressure, no anger. And there's no fighting. Uh, thank you, Peter. 
that you did that you know you should you shouldn't only cut off the ear cut off another part no 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 because jesus christ yesterday when there was no problem he was good today when there is problem is good and then after he died he rose again and by the time he rose the people were peter they had gone a fishing and he went there but all the same yesterday today and tomorrow and forever the same children have ye any bread no anger no fighting no kind of conflict that's the way the lord wants us to be he will give us grace he'll give you more grace that in your tough times you'll be like jesus look at verse 9 in verse 9 be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines be as stable as christ for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. The same, the same, the same all the time. Let's come to point number two now. Number two, the royal law of law for the royal priesthood. We're looking at James chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 8. If he fulfill the royal law. Now, the royal law. As you think about the law coming from the Old Testament, there is the ceremonial law. The ceremonial law is, you know, concerning killing of animals and shedding the blood. The ceremonial law is concerning if you touch a dead body, then you're unclean till the evening. If uh, you touch a pot or whatever, then that thing is unclean. Then the leper has to also cover his mouth. Unclean, unclean ceremonial law. That's different. There is the civil law. The civil law is, you know, what guides people in society that, uh, you know, the, the speed limit as you drive on the road. And when you take care, when you are going to build, you have to have a permit for the construction, the civil law. But there is the moral law. Moral law. Many people do not, they just say the law, the law, the law. And they say the law is abolished ceremonial law abolished the law that controls all those altar sacrifices of the old testament abolished because christ has become the final sacrifice for all our sins but the royal law the moral law the law of love loving your neighbor as yourself that one has not been abolished and loving the lord with all your heart all your soul all your mind that one can never be abolished actually when we get to heaven you see need to love the lord when you get to heaven so the law of love can never be abolished and then when you get to heaven you still love all the inhabitants of heaven love will be the great thing the central thing in heaven you know why god is love and in heaven everything will be built around love so don't say the law is abolished if you don't understand the law of love abides and remains the royal law of love for the royal priesthood it says in that james chapter 2 verse 8 if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself ye do well look at verse 9 in verse 9 but if ye have respect to persons 
he commits sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Now, look at First Peter chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are, not were, ye are at this present time a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light we have the royal priesthood and we have the royal law the law of love by which we live by which we think by which we plan because it's what we think in the heart that shows forth in our practical outward expression of living the royal law has to be in the heart the royal law has to be in our thoughts the royal law has to be in our imagination in our planning and then it comes out in a practical life three things we're looking at here number one practicing the royal law without discrimination Number two, performing the royal law without defilement. Number three, proclaiming the royal law without deviation. Number one. Number one is practicing the royal law without discrimination. It tells us, let's come back to James chapter 2 verse 8. A ye fulfill the royal law if ye fulfill the royal law you are driving on the way and there are other drivers motorists also driving fulfill the royal law don't just think about yourself i have the right of way and then eventually you cause accident live by the royal law. In your place of work, the way you relate with your director, the manager, and the way you relate with the junior, with the, uh, with the uh, lower people in the cadre, the royal law. If I'm in his position, how would I want him to relate with me? If I were in her position, how would I want her to talk to me? the royal law. And when you meet your friends, you're not trying to defraud them or do anything. If I were the person having that company, having that money, having those employees, how would I want my employees to deal with me, the royal law? And when you're dealing with the employees too as an employer, how do I deal with them? How do I pay them? The deal and how do I recognize their need and meet their need? The royal law and in your family, husband and wife, the royal law, parents and children, the royal law, and to your in laws, the royal law. And it depends on how you think. When you think right, you will act right. When you think right, you behave right. When you think right, and you're not thinking of myself, myself, what do I have? What do I gain? And what am I happy about? When you're thinking of the other people, others first, others first. When you think about their joy, you think about their happiness, you think about their gladness, and you think about what cheers them up, others first. Then you'll be living by the royal law. You are practicing the royal law without discrimination. It tells us in, um, in Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 34. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Then shall the king say to them on his right hand, Come, 
ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world verse 35 in verse 35 for when i was an hungered ye give me meat let me ask you if the hungry person that you have seen if he were christ real christ and he just appeared to you and is hungry what will you do if that person that you are relating with were real real christ what will you do how will you behave if uh, your fellow brother your fellow sister if it happened that he was real christ you've been saying if i on earth when christ was alive here on earth this is the way i will live what if that brother that sister if he were christ how will you behave how will you treat him how will you relate with her look at this for I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. If that person who was sick, Oh, you sick? Around you there, your neighbor there, also a brother, also a child of God. If that person uh, is sick, if that were Christ himself, are you going to wait for the instruction of a zonal leader, of a coordinator? Go and visit so and so. No, you will not wait. You will be so eager. You go and visit him. And Jesus said, I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Lord, I would have gone, but I'm not in the prison ministry. I'm not among those people who have been selected to go to the prison. But you know that person is in the prison, lonely there. If it were Christ, do you need to belong to a prison ministry? Before you do something, look at verse 37. In verse 37, then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, we saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink. Verse 38. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in and or naked and clothed thee, verse 39. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee, verse 40 now, in verse 40, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in as much as she have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. Amen. May the Lord open our eyes to understand what the Lord is going to reward on the final day people think the best thing you can do stay at the pulpit and preach and after that they do nothing else no helping hand no comforting words no nothing to support other people i'm a preacher i'm a preacher and that's enough and after preaching, 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 what else should I do? Look at what to do. To feed the hungry. And to give water to the thirsty. 
and to close the naked not to be so busy that you cannot touch the people that need encouragement and jesus said you did to the least of my brethren you have done it unto me look at verse 41 in verse 41 then shall he say also unto them on the left hand the part from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels and if you read further those people are going to ask why because i was hungry you didn't feed me i was thirsty you didn't give me drink i was naked you didn't clothe me lord if we saw you in that condition we will minister to you and because you didn't do it to the least of these my brethren you have not done it unto me our salvation must bear fruit the fruit of kindness and the fruit of practical love practicing the royal law without discrimination look at number two here number two performing the royal law without defilement without defilement we're looking at james chapter two and we're reading from verse 10 for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all the scripture is balanced very much balanced that we're fulfilling the royal law does not mean that we're going to disobey the word of god it is like a frame it's like a cake not turn over on one side and raw and defiled on the other side balance up everything we fulfill the royal law we love people but we don't allow lust to come into that love. I'm visiting a, you know, a sick sister, a sick brother. And then while visiting, I take food, I take, you know, whatever necessary items. But right there is like Amnon and Tamar. Seek come and give a food and while giving the food I'm not then refundable her and messed her up in giving food in giving money in taking care of people we fulfill the royal law of love without allowing any form of lust any form of immorality any form of the works of the flesh for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. look at verse 11 in verse 11 for he that said do not commit adultery also said do not kill now if thou commit no adultery Yet, if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. In obeying one part of scripture, we do not disregard or disobey or deny the other part of scripture. We're looking at Romans chapter 13. In Romans chapter 13, reading from verse 8. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law, the royal law. Verse 9. In verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, 
moral law not ceremonial law moral law if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself can we say that together thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself say it by yourself your neighbor starts with your wife love your wife as yourself your neighbor starts with your husband love your husband as yourself your neighbor starts with all those people you're living with at home charity begins at home love those people as yourself your neighbor starts with the people who are physically near to you think in love plan in love operate in love let everything you do be of love not that you know we just have it in the head and then it's not in the heart love your neighbor as yourself look at verse 10 in verse 10 love walketh no ill to his neighbor love walketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law well coming to number three here number three proclaiming the royal law without deviation proclaiming teaching it explaining it expounding it applying it we preach to ourselves first we proclaim to ourselves first that fellow is a false preacher false prophet who preaches to other people and he doesn't preach that same word to himself and that's how you discover false prophets they can declare follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord they preach it to others they don't preach to themselves it's like the husband quoting the bible to his wife and that same verse of scripture he never quotes to himself it's like the wife always bugging the husband with Bible, Bible, Bible verses. And the wife quoting the scripture to the husband and never quotes the scripture to herself. It's like, you know, the little child, they're having family devotion and the parents gave opportunity uh, to, you know, for that boy to be the one that will read the Bible and preach to us this morning. And that boy takes the opportunity, even wanting to say something and preaching to the parents and not preaching to himself when we proclaim the royal law we proclaim that royal law first to ourselves and now we also proclaim it to other people proclaiming the royal law without deviation deviation without division you know there are times uh, if you preach of the word of god maybe you see something in the bible and um, if I say it the way I should say it, my husband will say, look at that. My wife will say, look at that. So you know that that's in the scripture and you, are preach and you interpret it well. Well, when we get home, I'm going to ask him a question about that. And there are people, they will deviate from the proper interpretation and from the proper application of the word because if I read that, if I say that, that thing will boomerang. It will come back to me. Deviation, don't deviate. The word of God is higher than any man. The word of God is greater than any man. It's much, much older than any man. If he fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. Look at the first part of verse 12. In verse 12, so speak ye, and so do. So 
speak it, proclaim it forcefully, proclaim it faithfully, proclaim it transparently, and let the word of God remain the word of God, even if you have to go and pray and say, those who have heard you might be wondering, uh-huh, you're preaching, but look at this, but look at that. Let the word of God be preached and proclaimed without deviation. In Matthew chapter 22, we're reading from verse 37. Matthew 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Look at verse 38. In verse 38, this is the first and the great commandment. What's the first sin and the great sin? The inability to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. If that loving the Lord with all your heart is the first commandment, the first sin is disobeying that, transgressing that. If that is the great command, commandment that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, the great sin is that you are not doing that. And when the Lord commands you and he said, this is what to do. This is the direction to go and it is the, what to live for. If you don't do that, you don't love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and you're committing the first sin and the greatest sin. Look at verse 39. In verse 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy wife, thy husband as thyself. Thou shalt love thy parent, thy child as thyself. Thou shalt love that member, that friend as thyself. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, on these two commandments, loving God, loving man, loving God with all your heart, loving man as yourself, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. What does that mean? When you read the books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, you determine the law. On this loving God is the interpretation of whatever you find there. And then the prophets, when you read what the prophets are preaching, and you, the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, and Amos, and all of them, the interpretation. You must not interpret anything in those books of the law and the prophets contrary to this royal law. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mark chapter 12. We're looking at verse 29. In Mark chapter 12, verse 29, Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is here. O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 30, in verse 30, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. All thy strength. If you have little strength, expend it. Serve the Lord with that strength. If you have greater strength, serve the Lord with all your strength. Pastor, I'm weak today. You're weak, but you can stand. You're weak, but you can walk. You're weak, and you can go to the bathroom. You're weak, and you can eat. The strength that remains in that weakness, 
all the strength you have lived, serve the Lord and love the Lord with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no none other commandment greater than these. All those ceremonial commandments, the Old Testament, none can compare with these. There's none other commandment greater than this. Verse 32. In verse 32, and the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. Verse 33. In verse 33, and to love him with all thine heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole bunch of friends and sacrifices. Look at that. All the sacrifices you read about in the Old Testament, all the bunch of friends you read about, in the Old Testament there is nothing comparable to loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And the man confirmed that. Look at verse 34. It says, when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. He wasn't in yet, but he wasn't far. Just because he knew that in the head doesn't mean he got to the kingdom of God. Just because he agreed with what Jesus has said, that doesn't mean he had entered. There are many people that will affirm. There are many people that will give accent to the word of God. Well, until you repent. Until you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, until that word becomes part of your life, part of your character, and part of your motivation, everything you do, you have not entered in yet. And Jesus said, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the renewed law of liberty for all regenerated people. The renewed law, that the law that is still there now and is renewed from generation to generation. It's renewed for everyone in the kingdom. This is not the old ceremonial law. Here is the very law of God for everyone. In James chapter 2, reading from verse 12. In James chapter 2, verse 12, so speak ye and so do. So speak ye and so do. Preacher, so speak ye and so do. Leaders in the church, so speak ye. Preach sound doctrine. Don't stop at preaching. Don't stop at proclamation. So speak ye and so do. You. Leaders in the house fellowship and leaders among men, leaders among women, those who teach on marriage and those who teach on the family and those who encourage and counsel other people, sectional leaders, so speak ye. Don't say anything contrary to love in trying to kind of promote your position and your section. So speak ye only by the word of love. Don't speak anything contrary to love. Loving God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And loving your neighbor as yourself. So 
speak ye, every member of the church. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Verse 13, in verse 13, for he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy. Mercy, love, tenderness, gentle ears, affirm the truth in love. Present the truth with mercy. Hold sound doctrine with love, with tenderness, because for he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the mirror of the perfect law of liberty. Number two, the ministry of the probing law of the Lord. Number three, the might of the powerful law of life. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the mirror of the perfect law of liberty. In James uh, chapter 1, we're reading from verse 23. James chapter 1, verse 23. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, that is, in a mirror. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Forgetteth what manner of man he was. Whenever we come to the Bible study, was shown the mirror of the Word of God. And when the mirror is upheld before us, we see our spiritual face. We see our spiritual life. We see all the things we wouldn't have known about our personal life, about our private life, and about the things that need to be corrected. We look at the mirror. If after looking at the mirror, at a time of prayer, we don't give the time to pray. The time is there, uh, the person leading the prayer is leading the prayer, but we're not praying. We're not praying on what we saw in the mirror of the Word of God. We'll be like people who don't have any mirror. I read of a man who was um, a prisoner of war, P-O-W, and he was captured. And they incarcerated him and put him in a kind of room, but there was no mirror in that room. Deliberately, they did that. So that for one year, for two years, for three years, would you believe he spent 50 years in that prison as a prisoner of war. And all those 50 years, no mirror. He wasn't allowed to look at any mirror. And think of a person, if he entered there at the age of 25 and came out at the age of 75, and the first thing he wanted to see was he wanted a mirror after 50 years of being inside that place. And when he got a mirror and looked at his face, he dropped the mirror and started crying profusely because he, could, he had not seen that face for 50 years. And, uh, you know, that, that's like people who maybe they carry the Bible, but they never read the Bible to show themselves their face, how they look before God, how they look, and they're going to eternity. And for all these many years, maybe they hear the word of God, but every time they hear, they forget who they were. After 10 years of coming like that, coming like that, when one day you see your real self, 
your breakdown because you didn't know that this is how you were. That's the reason why every time you hear the word of God, look at that mirror and see what that mirror is saying about you. And then go to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb and be washed and be cleansed so that the mirror revealing something to you will lead you to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb that cleanses your life because he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, but also looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. He be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You will be blessed. I will be blessed. The Lord help you to make use of the privilege of hearing the word and being cleansed in the blood of them. Look at, look at number two. Number two, in the ministry of the probing law of the Lord. We're looking at Acts chapter 24, reading from verse 24. Acts 24, reading from verse 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. What's faith in Christ? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ beyond that. Repentance. Understanding your inability to save yourself. And because of that, you're introduced to the only one that can save the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you are called upon. Believe after you have repented. And so he sent for Paul the apostle concerning faith in Christ. Here is now the ministry of the word, verse 25. In verse 25, and as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, the self-control, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. The law of God probed him, searched him, and looked at everything in his life. The law of God spoke about the righteousness of God, the righteousness expected by God, and looked at his own righteousness and his righteousness way far behind the righteousness expected by God, and spoke about temperance. Temperance, the control that begins in the spirit. Control is not just controlling your tongue. Your heart has to be under control before you can control the tongue. Your spirit has to be under control before you can control your external life. And when he spoke about the implication of self-control, spirit control, life control, and the control of the scripture on a person's life, and he spoke of judgment to come. And he put him on the balances with his wife, Drusilla, and put them on the balances, and they were found wanting. He trembled that what a probing of the word of God does. But trembling is not enough. Felix, what are you going to do after that? Will you repent? Felix, what are you going to do after that? Will you make restitution? Felix, what are you going to do after that? Will you come to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb and be cleansed and be washed and be saved? It says, Felix said, he answered, Go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He never called. The people who hear, they don't take action. And they say, next day, next time, I come to the next Bible study. 
I'll come to the next meeting. That's how they postpone, postpone the salvation, the repentance, the coming back to the Lord, the restoration. Such people, tomorrow, 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 they never come. And if they die before that tomorrow comes, they perish. We're, we're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the might of the powerful law of life. The word of God is mighty. And the word of God does something within us that no other instrument can do. In Romans chapter 8, we're reading from verse 2. Romans chapter 8, we're reading here from verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is so mighty, is so powerful as you present yourself before that mighty word of God, powerful word of God, and you're allowed to do a redemptive work in your heart. And you're allowed to do a reviving work in your heart. You're allowed to do a regenerating work in your heart. You will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. For the love of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. It will make you free. Tonight, free from all the things that tied you when you were powerless and helpless, free. Yeah. And all the things that, you know, became like a habit, and that's how you have been, how you have been, and you have been wondering, how can I get out of this? The Lord sets you free tonight. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. The Lord will condemn every sin in your nature in Jesus' name. And it will root it out. You lost an amen. amen. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says that the righteousness of the Lord may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightier than ever before in Jesus' name. It will dwell in your heart. It will lead and control your life. And everything that you found impossible before, the Spirit of the Lord will make it possible to live a transparently righteous life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. I invite you to the Lord to tell the Lord what your need is. And I invite you to tell the Lord that His mighty spirit and His powerful spirit will walk in your heart more than ever before in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. He's able to help. He's willing to help. It will help you. Cry mightily unto the Lord. And don't hide anything. Reveal where you are, who you are, how you are unto the Lord. And the Lord will do the incredible, the impossible in your life. He'll make you ready, ready for heaven. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.
Brethren, open your mouth and pray that, Lord, open my eyes that I might behold the wondrous things out of thy law. That it will not just come in and they come in to the house of the law without having something indefinite, something spectacular that this will accomplish in our life tonight. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous thing out of thy law. Let tell the Lord that we will not be hearers of the word alone, but we will be doers. The Spirit of the living God will enable you and I to be doers of the word, not hearers only. Tell the Lord that at the end of it all, we will be able to serve the Lord with this investment. The heaven is endowed upon us. We will be able to contribute immensely into the kingdom of God with the word of life that we are receiving. That the Lord will be able to count on us that heaven has not labored in vain over you and over me. In Jesus' name we are prayed. And so, Father, in heaven we thank you for what you have Prepare for us this evening. And we pray we have come with our empty vessel. Fill overflow in Jesus' name. We are asking and praying that Holy Spirit, you take preeminent tonight in Jesus' name. And all our brethren that are still behind, hasten their feet in Jesus' name. Remove all the obstacles in, before them. Make all of us recipients of all that you have prepared for us in Jesus' name. Your servant, Lord, as you have prepared him, give him the manna, the bread of heaven, as he's open and releasing them to us, Holy Spirit, we ask that none will go without being accomplished in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer of prayer. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Let's have a seat. Let's close our eyes to pray. Eternal King, we bless you this evening for your faithfulness and your love towards us. We thank you for making it possible for us to be alive to witness this day. We ask that as we sing to you, you accept our praises in Jesus' name. We'll sing from our hearts to you and you receive all the worship in Jesus' name. We thank you because now you've answered. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest, amen. Glory be to God in the highest, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen, amen. be to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. For his mercies endure it forever. Amen. For his mercies endure it forever. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer. Offer unto thee, unto the Lord, seas of thanksgiving, as we offer unto thee, unto the Lord, the sacrifice, seas of 
blessings and honor and glory and praise and glory and praise and glory and praise blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord glory hallelujah Oh, yes, and glory and praise, blessings and honor and glory and praise be unto Christ our Lord. Open my eyes, O Lord. Blessed Spirit, open my eyes, O Lord. Holy Spirit, open my eyes, O Lord. I am ready to obey, Lord. I am ready to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, open my eyes, O Lord. Holy Spirit, open my eyes, O Lord. I am ready to obey, Lord. I am ready to obey. Following Jesus every day by day nothing can harm me anywhere i go satan is walking all over the world but jesus my savior is my all in all following him every day Every day by day, Satan is working all over the world, but Jesus, my Savior, is my holy Lord. Keep me shining, Lord, keep me shining, Lord, in all I say or do, that the world may see Christ is in me, and learn to love Him to keep me shining. Keep me shining, Lord, in all I say or do, that the world may see Christ is in me, and learn to love Him to keep me shining. In all I say, all do, all do, that the world may see Christ is in me, and learn to love Him too. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me, wonderful to know to know it is wonderful to know that jesus died for me wonderful to know to know my savior died for he died for me my sins we are washed away, hallelujah. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know, to know. It is wonderful. to know 
it is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful, wonderful to know, to know my Savior died for me. He died for me. Hallelujah, it is wonderful to know that Jesus died. Wonderful, wonderful to know. He is my everything, he is my all. He is my everything, both great and small. He gave himself for me, made everything new. He is my everything. And what about you? And what about you? He is my all. He is my all. Everything, both great and small. Made everything new, he is my everything. And what about you? Some folks may ask me, some folks may say, Who is this Jesus? You talk about every day, he is my savior, he set me free. He is my everything, and what about you, and what about you? Everything is my, he is my home. Both great and small, he gave himself for me, made everything new. He is my everything. And what about you? I'll live for Jesus day after day. I'll live for Jesus. Let's come what's may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day, day after day. I'll live for Jesus. I will obey, I will obey. I will love, I will love, I will love, I will love. I will love Jesus' people. I will love everybody Jesus wants me to love. I will love, yes, I will love. I will love. I will love. I will love, yes, I will love. Yes, I will love, I will love, I will love, I will love. I will love, I will love Jesus' people. Jesus wants me to love, I will love, follow, follow. I will follow Jesus everywhere, anywhere. I will follow him. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere he leads me. I will follow him, follow him. I will follow Jesus. Anywhere I will follow him, 
follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere He leads me, I will follow, follow Him, follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, anywhere, I will follow Him. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere He leads me, I will follow Him. Complete, complete, complete in Him. I am complete in Him. Complete, complete. Complete in Him, I am complete in Him, complete in Him. Complete in Him. That I may know him, yes, I may know him, that I may know him. You are welcome tonight to the Bible study in Jesus' name. Essentially, we want to welcome our visitors, the GCK converts, and the invitees coming for the first time to our church headquarters. Please kindly signify by raising up your hand if tonight is your first time in our church. We appreciate if you can upstanding for recognition and for our general superintendent greeting. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, our general superintendent is highly delighted that you are here tonight, and the entire church do which you continue to receive from the Lord, as the Lord has been using him to bless thousands of people through the word of God. As you come tonight, great will be your blessing in Jesus' name. Our ushers we give to you. Uh, as sleep, please receive from them. As soon as you have done, please have your seat. Every Monday we have our systematic and expository Bible study. And this is personally handled by our general superintendent and it's being transmitted across the globe. And this starts by 5.45 p.m. in all our district and location churches. Thursday, revival and evangelism training service. It's a time for revival and the training in evangelism. Sunday worship service. Every Sunday, we have an enriching Sunday worship service. Starting with start the scripture by 745 in our various district churches. We need to rise as we sing our congregational song two one six two one six two hundred and sixteen more about Jesus will I know more about Jesus will I know more of his grace to other show more of his saving foolish see more of his law who died for me. 
more about Jesus, let me learn more of his holy we discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be showing the things of Christ to me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More about Jesus on his throne, riches in glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me.
Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. Chapter 25. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation, and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent, and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri the son of Selu, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosbi, the daughter of Zer. He was head over a people and of a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites, and smite them. For they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Cosbi, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain on the day of the plague for Peor's sake. You have just listened to the Bible reading. And we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We put our hands out with our offering, ties and offering, as we pray together. Shall we raise our ties and offering for prayer? Father, we thank you for this offering, and we pray that you are sanctified in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Please, drop your offering in the bag that has been passed by the leaders. God bless you.
Father, hear 